Bowman is a Bowman 46 designed by Holman and Pye and built by Holman Yachts in Chichester, England in 1973. The hull itself was moulded by the famous Tyler Yard in Essex. Below the waterline is solid laminate with integral lead keel. Above and the deck is foam sandwich. This creates a well insulated and stiff yacht. Bowman is a dream to sail. She has sweet lines and an easily driven hull. She is easily single-handed or sailed two up. All the reefing lines are brought back to the cockpit. She has a roller furling genoa as well as removable inner forestay to hang on either a solent jib for windward work in strong winds or a high cut working jib that reefs to storms jib size. There are three reefs in the mainsail. She obviously carries a spinnaker and pole for running downwind. I love the yawl rig. It's great for manoeuvring under sail or to keep the boat steady in a rolly anchorage, as well as to fly a mizzen staysail on a broad reach. In all sailing conditions, Bowman is superb. She is fast in light airs and medium as well as strong winds. Relative to other yachts of more modern design, she generally slips by leaving them far astern after a few hours especially when we beat up wind. Bowman with her deep draught of 2.2 metres and her low windage just keeps climbing to windward, leaving those wider, higher freeboards free being blown off each wave. The cockpit is deep enough to feel very safe in, in all weather, with a spray hood to duck behind. The wheel is connected to the rudder with a mamba system, which is solid rod linkage with various universal joints. There are no cables and there is no slack in the system. The helm is, ne is near friction free and direct control to the rudder. The hydraulic ram for the autopilot is connected to the rudder arm so is also direct. She has a superb Lofrans leopard windlass that is fast and powerful with both foot pedals or remote radio controlled handhold handheld controller. This is great for single handing in the Mediterranean when one must go stern to the quay. The 70 metres of 10 millimetre chain self stacks and does not require knocking down as on many boats. Bowman is greatly admired wherever she goes. She is one of those boats that you just have to turn back at and have one more last look. The quality of her original construction was such that she really is an easy boat to maintain. Having said that, she had a major refit in 2001, comprising new teak deck, new booms and deck hardware, but her original winches, new standing rigging, but original spars, new stanchions and pushpit pulpit, new Beta Marine 50 horsepower engine, with now 1,950 hours on it extra 24 volt 100 amp domestic bank alternator, new windlass, new radar, VHF, new B&G instruments and autopilot. This was a very expensive refit. Since then she has had a complete new suit of sails, sail covers, new diesel heating system, paint job, new GN Espace cooker, the Rolls Royce of cookers, new prop shaft and feathering propeller, as well as a new upholstery, interior varnish, paint, new Levac loose, new frigger boat fridge compressor with keel cooler, as well as, a, as well as a holding tank system for the forward head. She has great tankage, 750 litres of water and 350 of diesel. Fuel consumption varies from 2 to 3.4 litres per hour. If it is calm and you throttle back to 1500, she will make 5.5 knots and burn 2 litres an hour. Conversely, if you run at 2200, she'll make 7 knots, but burn through 3.4 litres an hour. We have on occasion come up against some rough weather. In particular, we were beating up the English Channel into a northeast east 7 with a fair spring tide. The tide off start point was a good 3.5 knots against that strong wind. Bowman was wet, wet, very wet, going straight through the seas. Unfortunately, our life raft was washed off its mount just forward of the mast. Somehow, I managed to heave to and rescue it. At that moment, I decided that when that old life raft needed to be serviced, 
I would replace it with a new one in a valise and store it below out of the elements, dry and safe, where it could not be stolen or damaged or even indeed lost in heavy weather. Once we were hove to, she was remarkably dry, so much so that we decided to just let the tide carry us round the headland whilst jogging along under a double reef main and a backed working jib. She would just crab along at about a, a knot, 50 degrees or so off the wind. After a coffee and a change of clothes, we were off again to slog our way up the channel. Frankly, I would argue that few modern yachts would be capable of sailing upwind in such conditions. Certainly not the cheaper, mass-produced floating caravan type. I do not re refer to the high-quality yachts, such as the Halberg Rassies or Amels of this world. Generally speaking, I can honestly say that we have set out some very heavy gales at anchor without problem, and only one or two gales at sea without undue concern. We have, however, knowingly left harbour, or anchorage, and sailed into winds of force seven on many occasions. This is because we feel safe in Bowman in those conditions. Even going upwind into 35 knots is tolerable. Not pleasant, I admit, but that old girl, she just tucks her bow in and goes. No slamming, no sense that the boat will fall apart, just fast and wet. My children in the saloon with the lee cloths up, wondering what the fuss is all about. Storage is good. On deck, from aft, there's a lazarette locker, which is dry, with mooring lines, swimming ladder, outboard tank and fuel, fuel tank, long stern lines, 60 metres times three of, plus gas locker with overside drain. There's also a dive tank with regulator and accessories. The cockpit has a massive locker to port that stores. Now, are you ready? Two folding, folding bicycles, a spinnaker, solent jib, working jib, eight fenders, an Aries wind vane, now removed in the med, large lobster pot, sheets, guys, spare halyards, as well as the fridge compressor tucked out of harm's way, plus an extra hatch, engine access hatch. Then in the bow there's a small wet locker with drain over the side with a 45 pound CQR spare anchor, spear gun, spear guns, mast fins, etc. Down below is a lovely double aft cabin with heads and its own access to the cockpit. A crawl comes stoop through to the saloon. Here is the tool store and battery compartment outboard and a diesel heater. Then into the saloon a standing chart table to starboard. There is no seat unfortunately. A shame yes but as ever a compromise. Below the chart table is a massive storage area where we store paint, varnish, more tools, power tools, spares, and then under that is our shoe storage. It's quite nice to have a shoe locker. To port is the really great galley with double stainless sinks as well as insulated fridge and the above named new cooker. The saloon with good sea berths, lee cloths, folding table. Up forward, a head on the port side with a shower, hanging lockers to starboard and a double V berth forward. All very traditional and it works extremely well. Remember, Bowman was built to sail and not sit in the marina. She's ready to head off, head off across the ocean and find an anchorage in paradise.